while broadcast television remains remains still a pillar among among some major networks of broadcast television like an array of Fox and NBC, ABC and CBS as they're still they're still number they're all still number one on their on their, with their own programming as they're very confident as their programming continues both on on broadcast television cable and streaming but as of right now we need to talk about out uh, a a broadcast television network that has been existed since 2006 the CW the CW was created through a joint venture forces by 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 CBS Corporation and Time Warner to replace both existing networks which which clinged to life if only to fall away the WB and UPN respectively During 1993 to 2006, when the WB and UPN both launched within one week of each other in January 1995, just as the Fox Network started had started to secure a foothold with American television audiences, the two networks launched to limited fanfare and generally mediocre, mediocre to poor results. However, eleven and a, and a half seasons subsequent, both were able to air several series that became quite popular, such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Star Trek Voyager, The Sentinel, Seventh Heaven, Dawson's Creek, Charm, Smallville, and America's Next Top Model. Towards the end of their first decade on the air, the WB and UPM were in decline, unable to reach the audience share or have or have the effect that Fox had gained within its first decade, much less than that of the big three networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC, respectively. In the 11 years that UPN and the WB were in operation, the two networks lost $2 billion. Chris Crab Industries, Viacom, and Time Warner officials had discussed a possible merger of UPN and the WB as of early September 1995, only eight months after their respective launches. However, discussions ultimately broke down over issues on, uh, on how to combine Chris Craft and Tribute Broadcasting Station's interest in a proposal to merge the networks. Since the two companies' stations' portfolios overlapped with, one an, with only one another in several major markets, by 2003, however, Time Warner became mirrored in several debt problems. The company had already been responsible for shutting down Warner Brothers' in-house animation department and for selling off m major portions of the conglomerate, su such as the 2004 sale of Warner Brothers Records, or which distributed which distribute, uh, the children's show Kid Songs and the rest of the Warner Music Group to an investor group led, led by Edgar Boffman Jr. and Thomas H. Lee Partners. By, by 2005, when the UP and the WB are still clinging to life, they are losing money as of 2003-2006 right, as or 2005. On January 24, 2006, Warner Brothers Television and CBS Corporation, owners of the WB and UPN would announce that, they, that the two would be shutting down both of their channels in order to join forces by, by, become, by, by combining their two networks into a single channel with all stations, with all stations abandoning in parts of the WB and UPN stations. Depending on where you live, um, for an example, because I live in the Philadelphia area, um, um, WPHL 17, it used to be the WB network, and it later became, 
um, PHL 17, My Network TV, um, that, that's an example. And, uh, um, a WPSG TV, Philadelphia, uh, it was a, it was a UPN station, and it later, it became CW Philly 57, and that was, and that, and that was where we get to the creation of the one and only, the CW. And with the CW, um, any type of shows that, that were on the WB or UPN would get canceled. Seventh Heaven, Seventh Heaven was in its current season. It ended up getting canceled, but due to better ratings, the the show ran for one more season on the CW. The Beauty and the Geeks is current had had a current season, and the show ran for a few more seas for future seasons on the CW. Jeff Foxworthy's Blue Collar TV, he ended. Charm was was wrapping up its final season before the CW merge. Everwood is, is it was in its final season. The Gilmore Girls was in their current season, and their show ran for or one more season on the CW, just like Seventh Heaven. Smallville. It, Smallville was in its current season during the two thousands, and they ran for for future seasons on the CW until they until they ended. Um, Reba was in her current season, and her show ran for for a for a future season on the CW, as well. Um. Um, it was Supernatural's first and only season on the WB during the two thousand five se- two thousand six season lineup. Um, and it went on to continue on CW as as Supernatural was the only the final the WB original to survive on the CW before and it before the, its season finale had had aired where where Supernatural was canceled entirely. UPM was also declining. So when the so when so when the WB and UPM merged into CW on September eighteenth or September eighteenth, um, it's basically the same channel, but with ver- but with the WB and UPN shows together. But some people say that some people say that that it was better when the shows were rivaled by by both by both networks. Here are here were the shows that were that were picked to join the CW. From the WB, Seventh Heaven, Beauty and the Geek, The Gilmore Girls, One Tree Hill, Reba, Smallville, The Supernatural, and over on UPN's stake, America's Next Top Model, Veronica Mars, Everybody Hates Chris, Girlfriends, All of Us, and WWE SmackDown. Upon the network's launch, the CW chose to use the scheduling model, utilized by the WB, Due to in part to the fact that it had more an extensive base programming scheduled than UPN, so they are going to be continuing using the WB scheduling model utilized that was by the WB by combining the WB carried 30, 30 hours of programming each week. It carries both children's programming and daytime programming. That UPN did not offer, so 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 that's the only so that's the only thing that the WB's legacy only has its scheduling model. Oh, honestly, e. a premiere promo for the CW have been have been revealed. The promo the promo was very nice, but for some people, CW could still suck its ass with it. I'm afraid. At launch, the CW premiered a new show, The Game, in its uh, first season on the CW. The CW launched with a primetime special, a launch party, from CBS Paramount produced Entertainment Tonight at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California on September 18th, with a repeat of the 10th season, season finale of 7th Heaven, and the same schedules were repeated on September 19th with the sixth season finale of Gilmore Girls. The network will continue to air season finales from from the from the 
from the previous season through the remainder of the first week, except for America's Next Top Model and WWE SmackDown, which both respectively started their new seasons on September 20th and on the 22nd, with two-hour premieres. When Top Model made its network premiere, the CW scored a 3.4 rating, 5 share, with an hour rate with an hourly ratings 3.1 of 5 and and 3 6 out of 6 6 out of 6 the CW placed 5th overall in the Nizlin household ratings it scored a 2.6 rating among adults 18 to 49 finishing that finishing 4th in that age demographic beating out Fox on that night the second week consisted of season and series premieres for all of its other series from September 25th to October 1st, with the exception of Barack and Mars, which debuted its third season on October 3rd. Despite having several most of the most popular programs being carried over from the WB and UPN as part of its schedule, <coughs> the CW, even though it experienced some success with newer programs that launched in subsequent seasons, which became modest hits. So so this was the biggest thing. This was the biggest good idea that Time Warner and CBS Corporation had done. However, however, this would not last long. Um largely struggled to gain an audience footholding throughout its first five years on air because of declining viewership for the network during the 2007-2008 fall season and effects of the Writers Guild of America strike, the network announced on March 4, 2008 that it would eliminate its comedy department dismissing Executive Vice President of Comedy Kim Fleury and Senior Vice President of Comedy Steve Vesile. I'm sorry if I pronounced their last names wrong. While also combining its drama and current programming departments into a single scripted programming unit. It, um, the restructuring resulted a lot of layoffs to 25 to 30 employees. It also included the elimination of the of of children of their of the children's programming in segment that that moved to the CW. Speaking of, if you have not Watch my Kids WB History video or Medora Entertainment's video. Oh, well, I'll provide links in the description. On September 23, 2006, Kids WB was moved to the CW, as has nowhere else to go. So, so September 23, 2006, it was Kids WB's first day on the new CW for the 2006-2007 fall lineup. Many, um... Most shows, part of the WB animated shows would 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 continue to air on the CW while acquired programs would get dropped. Pokemon, especially, along with Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, due to the fact that higher-ups at Kids WB were not thrilled on where the Pokemon anime were going through and was to heading towards to, they decided to, to drop drop the dull shows in favor for their newly animated shows. Emphasizing, let's just say they're emphasizing the WB in Kids WB. That that doesn't mean they stopped with the acquired shows. They still had the acquired shows like like in the later in their later seasons until until up until its death. Anyway any anyway. Kids WB ran its course on the CW until until it announced layoffs from the Kids WB unit as the block was set to get replaced as on as on October 2nd, 2007, through a joint decision between Time Warner and CBS Corporation, the CW announced that the existing Kids WB unit would be discontinued due to fierce competition and lack of advertising. And they announced that they would be selling the five-hour programming slot that the Kids WB unit was in was airing into Four Kids Entertainment, with Four Kids relaunching it as the as the new CW Four Kids on May twenty fourth, two thousand eight. 
and the elimination and transfer of marketing positions at the CW Plus to the network's marketing department. Right. Not right. Not cool. On May 9th, 2008, the CW announced that it would lease its Sunday lineup, then running from 5 to 10 p.m. Um, as a primetime lineup to production company Media Rights Capital, or MRC, as Sundays have hysterically have been a low-rated night for the network during its first two seasons on the air, due to stiff competition from CBS, ABC, and Fox's strong Sunday lineups, and complicated further by NBC's acquisition of Sunday Night Football in September of 2006, shortly before the CW debuted. Really? Seriously? I didn't... I didn't really? Really? Oh, uh, wow. The CW really struggled. That... That... A late... A late... Uh, a Sunday... A low... Low-rated Sunday night on their lineup. Really? And due to stiff competition from other networks, including Fox? Wow. Fox especially because they have their own animation domination unit on their line. Featuring The Simpsons. Family Guy, etc. I couldn't believe it. Now, anyway, the move allowed the CW to concentrate on its Monday through Friday primetime night schedule, while giving MRC the right to develop the schedule or programs of its own choosing and reap advertising revenue generated by the lineup. The Sunday series that were scheduled, two reality series, for real and in harm's way, and two scripted series, romantic dramedy, Valentine and drama, Easy Money, performed poorly in the ratings, only averaging 1.4 million viewers, prompting the CW to scrap its agreement with MRC and program Sunday nights on its own starting. Uh, in November 2008, with no first run programming available to run on Sundays as a backup. The network added reruns of the Drew Carey, Drew Carey show and the and Jerro oh, of all of all of all shows and movies to replace the MRC produced programs. One of the shows carried over to the network from UPN, WWE SmackDown, ended its run on the CW after September 26, 2008, due to, due, to, due to negotiations ending between WWE and the CW network on renewing the program. Um, the, CW, the CW would re-air WWE, but on, only on Saturday mornings for, for a new children's programming unit. By 2012, oh, which we'll get to it in a moment, and when we get to the children's programming part. Now, now WWE SmackDown would move to My Network TV. The same that same season, the Fox owned network, which launched on the same month as the, uh, as the CW's debut, on on September 5th. The CW struggled. In the Nizzling ratings from its inception, primarily placing fifth in all, in all, in all the results tabulated by by Nizzlin. total audience viewership and demographic ratings. On several occasions, the network would be out outrated by Spanish la- Spang- Spanish language network Univision, which led to the speculation within the industry, including on May 16, two thousand eight. A article in the Wall Street Journal that CBS and Time Warner or both companies might abandon Avenger if ratings did not improve. Oof. The network's fortunes were buoyed during during the following 2008 to 2009 the 2010 television seasons, thanks to the increased ratings among females in the 1834 demographic. And the buzz that that some of its newer series, such as Gossip Girls, Nine Zero to Ten, and Vampire Diaries, had generated with audiences. Executives with CBS Corporation at Time Warner also emphasized their commitment to the network. In two thousand nine, it 
the CW announced that it would give five hours of the network time on Sundays back to its affiliated stations that fall, effectively becoming an overnight-only network in primetime. In addition to CW Daytime, AIM, which which formerly known as WB, Daytime WB, and the CW for Kids blocks, the latter block, airing on Saturday mornings, will remain the only weekend programming supplied by the network. This change meant that the Sunday late afternoon repeat block that the CW inherited from the WB, formerly branded by that network as Easy View, was discontinued. Subsequently, in mid-May, 65% 65% of the CW affiliates, including those carrying the CW+, Plus, signed agreements to continue to to replace, to air the replacement MGM Showcase movie package on Sundays, which was offered as a traditional syndication film package meant for the CW's former primetime slot in the night. The 2010s would, would see the CW's whose new leadership and content shift. They would, they, um, for, as, that, as, my, as Mark Perowitz was appointed by the network to succeed original president of entertainment, Don Ostrov, Mark, Mark Perowitz may, was made the network's first president and assumed broader responsibilities on the CW, in the CW's business operations than Ostrov had. had. He oversaw entertainment operations, while John Matta, the uh, the network's chief operating officer, handled business affairs. affairs. Which both both of them reported to a board composed of CBS and Warner Brothers executives. It was, um... Matter began reporting to Perowitz as a result of the latter's appointment as, as, as network president. Perowitz revealed that the core audience demographic of the network would not change for the, through the seat for the CW would attempt to lure new viewers. Perowitz began looking to bring in comedies back to the CW after Ostrov had publicly declared that the, dip, the difficulty of developing comedies for its target, target demographic was a main reason why the removal the removal of the network throughout the 2008-2009 season with Everyone Hates Chris and The Game, a spinoff of Girlfriends, being the last comedies to get canceled. The network also ordered more new ep- more episodes of its original series and ran them conclusively starting in September 12th through, through the first week of December without repeats and no reruns. In 2012... Powerwitz no longer referred to the target audience of the CW as women, 18 to 34, but rather it would be just an 18 to 34 adult network. Although the network was still not profitable, it became a non-profit network. CBS and Warner Brothers were very successful in selling their CW shows overseas in 2011. And a one billion deal with streaming service Netflix became another way to sell CW shows. The introduction of action adventure superhero series Arrow, based on the DC Comics Green Arrow, received favorable reviews from from critics and became a hit with audiences as it premiered. Not only Arrow premiered to bring in highest viewership on in the network's history. The third highest overall as of 2015 behind the series premieres of The Vampire Diaries and The Flash. But it also gave the network its strongest performance in the demographic of males. Since Smallville ended its run in May 2011, the network also found success with its summer programming in 2013 with the revival of the U.S. version of the improv comedy series, Whole Line Is It Anyway? Which, which is my favorite show, which later became a year-round staple of the network schedule. Arrow continued to perform strongly, leading to a spinoff with The Flash, which surpassed The Vampire Diaries as the highest premiere, 
highest rated premiere in the network's history and became the, the most watched show. Jane the Virgin earned some of the highest critical praise of any series during the 2014-2015 season and became the first ever CW original ever to be nominated and won a Golden Globe Award with lead actress Gina Rodriguez winning the Golden Globe for Best Actress, Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. Other CW shows like The Flash, The 100, and Nick Tia will also go on to be nominated for Primetime Emmy Awards. Several shows from 2011 to 2019 being nominated for categories in the Teen Choice Awards and Saturn Awards and others. Overall, the network ended the 2014-2015 posting its highest average total viewership in a single television season since 2007 to 2008, with 2.15 million viewers, a 12% increase in total viewership year to year. The CW also posted its highest seasonal demographic ratings among males ages 18-49, with a 0.8 share. Expanding on the success of the network's Arrowverse franchise, DC Legends of Tomorrow premiered to high ratings of the network and became the most watched show on the network's Thursday night block in two years. During the 2015 to the 2016 season saw Crazy Ex-Girlfriend become one of the most critically acclaimed shows of the season and the second show on the network to be nominated for and win a Golden Global Golden Globe Award with actress Rachel Bloom winning a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. However, the CW would see a lot of expanding of their viewership up until by mid to the 2010s and up all the way into the 2020s, with the network's Arrowverse expanding again with Supergirl being moved to the network to move to the network from CBS for its second season. The debut of Archie Comics, based on Riverdale, signaled the network's foray into mining their parent studio's library of IP to create new television series based on recognizable properties. This led to another DC Comics series, Black Lightning, and a rebooted Dynasty. While it met with poor ratings, Dynasty proved lucrative thanks to the Netflix output and international syndication, which earned CBS Studios millions of dollars per episode. Selling CW series like Dynasty to Netflix and overseas marketing was so profitable for Warner Brothers and CBS that the network almost stopped canceling shows and expanded its broadcast schedule. On February 14, 2018, the CW announced that it will launch a two-hour primetime block on Sunday nights, beginning in the fourth, fourth quarter of, of 2018. It later added a third hour in October 2023, returning the network to Sundays for the first time since the lease to Media Rights Capital ended in 2009. As well as expanding the CW's primetime slate from 10 hours to a week to 12. Discussions with CBS and Warner Brothers about the expansion began as of July, as early as July 2017, giving their approval to to that move that summer. With the networks reaching clearance deals with key affiliate partners in early 2018. However, the however, unfortunately, however, unfortunately, by late by 2018. On June 12th of that year, AT&T received antitrust approval to acquire Warner Brothers' parent company, Time Warner, with the acquisition closing two days later. Time Warner was renamed Warner Media, and AT&T became co-owner of the CW with CBS. The CW debuted reboots of Charmed, Roswell, and original spin-off Legacies during the 2018 to 2019 season. Despite modest ratings, their renewals, along with the renewal of their entire 2018 to 2019 lineup, add some of those shows already, announcing, previously announcing as ending. Reflected their value to the network's founding co-owner CBS and Warner Brothers, which resulted the windfall of selling them to Netflix and international buyers. 
the strategy continued with the 2019-2020 season debuts of the new Arrowverse series, Batwoman, Riverdale spinoff, Katie Keene, and Nancy Drew. On August 13, 2019, CBS and Viacom announced their re-intention to remerge, but the combined company to be named to be renamed Viacom CBS. The merger was completed on December 4th. Making them officially with AT&T's Warner Media co-owners of the CW. However, Warner Media and CBS However, Warner Media and Viacom CBS did not renew CW's Netflix renewal in 2019, intending to use their shows on the network to make for their own streaming services. Um, so yeah. So some so Warner Media's HBO Max has came. The streaming service acquired exclusive streaming rights to Warner Brothers produced CW shows. This began in the 2019-2020 season, but the Warner Brothers produced Batwoman and Katie Keene debuted on HBO Max after their current seasons finished airing on the CW. The CBS Studios produced Nancy Drew was originally announced to be heading to corporate sibling owner CBS All Access, but appeared on HBO Max instead. The reason for this, amid the rebranding of CBS All Access to Paramount Plus and the changes surrounding the Viacom CBS merger. CBS and Warner Brothers made the collective decision to have all CW shows having have a singular service home, streaming home on HBO Max. Um, beyond beyond their streaming home of CW programming, HBO Max shares a co-ownership connection with the network, which allows for programming partnerships. This would begin the DC comic series Stargirl, which the CW shared with the DC Universe. DC Universe and the CW co-financed the series, with episodes pre- premiering on DC Universe and airing the next day on the CW. After DC Universe was folded into HBO Max, Stargirl was renewed with a new co-finance deal with CW's re- with CW Receives, First run airings followed by by its launch on HBO Max. Wow. In May 2021, the CW announced that it would be began programming on Saturday nights on a regular basis beginning in the 2021-2022 fall season, with the approval of the expansion by the network's key affiliate groups as part of the deal. The CW ceased all programming the CW daytime block and return this time to its stations. So where ultimately the CBS, I mean the CBS Warner Brothers, aka the CW daytime, which, which used to be, which used to be the kids WB after tune show, which at the time was renamed daytime WB, then the daytime CW block was discontinued. The time was given back to its stations. With the additions of Saturday nights, the CW has programming on every night of the week for the first time in the network's history, becoming the sixth America English language commercial broadcast network ever and the first since Fox to have offered primetime content on a nightly basis. However, this all these good stuff will have to come to an end, and it will not last long. As, as in twenty twenty two on January fifth of that year, the Wall Street Journal reported that Warner Media and CBS and CBS Corporation with Viacom CBS were exploring a possible sale. Oh, oh, um, a possible sale of either as a majority stake or all the CW. And that Next Star Media Group, which became the CW's largest affiliate group when it acquired former WB Network co owner Tribute Broadcasting in 2019, which considered a leading bidder. The network, the network president and CEO Mark Perowitz confirmed that talk, confirmed talks of potential sale, but added it was, it was too early to speculate what might happen. Next Star CEO Perry Sook 
in, in spring 2022 did not confirm the rumored buyout. But three months later, before three months before Nexstar made their official purchase, the CW canceled ten shows. Four thousand four hundred and Naomi. And longtime fixtures. Batwoman, Charmed Reboot, Dynasty, In the Dark, Legends of Tomorrow, Rollswell, New Mexico, and Legacies. More shows were canceled or given final season orders. It was in the following months, including Nancy Drew, Stargirl, The Flash, and Riverdale. And this and guess what? This also means the potential of the judge shows. In late June, the Wall Street Journal indicated a purchase of the CW by Nexstar was closed. And on October August 15th, Nexstar confirmed it had entered in a definitive agreement to acquire a 75% majority stake in the network. 25% would be shared by Paramount Global and Warner Brothers Discovery would remain would remain the Let's see. 12.5% of all stake interests. Wow. Nah, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Not cool. Anyway. Though there are no monetary terms were announced, Next Star report Next Star reportedly would not pay any cash or stock up front. And would absorb approximately 100 million dollars of network debt. Um, the Hollywood Reporter said it that Nexstar retained it has retained fifty four million dollars based in on its cash on on hand, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and other liabilities. So so that means with what CW under under Nexstar, it would be it wouldn't be taken long as we were about to see something completely different. Practically. During the 2023 broadcast season as of right as as of last year. Um most um all CWs any any station that are that are occupied on the CW are gonna be are gonna be renamed or are gonna be moving to we're all going to be independent from now on. Okay, let's talk. Okay, let's talk about the affiliates. So, um, during the twenty twenty during the twenty twenty three twenty twenty four fall season, it was it it was announced it was it was announced that any the NECW stations that are currently occupied by the CW network itself is going to be. Are all going to be either independent or move or move to my network TV stations, in respectively. And this happened in my area. Depending on where you, this depends on where you live. So, um, CW affiliate. So, um, my C, my 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 CW affiliate, CW Philly fifty seven became became Philly fifty seven for for the first time since nineteen ninety five. Um. As um as the CW network would go to would go to PHL seventeen. So that means we find so that means the CW in my area wouldn't be completely dead as it will be moving to to WPHL seventeen. Officially marking it as CW seventeen. Wow. So it is the belief that all it is believed that the C that all CW stations became independent, or moved to my network stations, and or something. And as it'll as it'll be it'll be a future upon the CW's view, uh, as it'll be a future on the CW's fall lineups and such. Um. Okay. Let's talk about more TV cancellations. So any, anyway. Any any type of show that are currently in their seasons are all have all announced are all going to get canceled. Um, the most critical and most devastation of the two thousand twenties was the two net was the two shows 
Judge Mathis and the People's Court, which are still airing, which were airing on on the CW Philly Fifty Seven now, Philly Fifty Seven as of right now, which all ended production and as as the judges, Judge Greg Mathis and 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 the Honorable Judge Millian Millian have spun off their own shows as they will continue to have their their court shows those up there which while 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 other shows will either get cancelled or not in any case in any case this in any case this is this is a big one anyways because I ditched cable I'm not interested with the other with 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 broadcast networks as I as I know as I no longer have cable. By but, but the genius part and the good thing, thankfully though, I have there is a website where I can watch watch the cable channels and the broadcast networks. And anyway anyway and anywho with with the this gives us this gives us to the CW network we know for today. Hey. However, um revealing from after after receiving a post from from Adrian the Amazing Guy 2005 that he told everyone that the CW logo has changed into a new one. Um so if you guys seen the CW logo from 2006 to to us to 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 January 14th of this year it it is now rebranded now the the logo is a it the, the logo font is a little bigger than than the last one and no surprise not no surprise honestly it's not that bad though however they remove they removed the the which which was inside the C. Wow, what a wow, what a seriously seriously right now? That was that was that was seriously that that was a that was a big loss anyway. But anyway. But anyway. But the CW still Still, still clinging on to this very day. I think things are fine for the CW network itself. Now let's talk about. Now let's talk about the children's programming that the CW had in its in its existence run. Starting with starting with with one with with what with the WB's unit of kids. Audiences, Kids WB. On September twenty third, two thousand six, the Kids WB Children's Unit, which originated from the WB in September of nineteen ninety five and continued to be produced by Warner Brothers, was carried over to CW as its as part of its inaugural and old programming lineup. Although the network on which it originated ceased operations the week before the Kids WB branding was retained for the block. On October second, two thousand seven, through a joint decision between Warner Brothers and CBS Corporation, the CW announced that it would discontinue the Kids WB unit due to competition from other net from cable channels and lack of children's advertising, and that they would sell their five-hour programming slot rights to Four Kids Entertainment. Which at the time of the announcement had produced a competing children's programming unit on Fox for Kids TV. Kids WB ended its run on May 17, 2008, although some stations like WUPA Atlanta aired it on Sundays instead. With the, with the block airing for the last time on May 18th on some CW affiliates, with 4 Kids relaunching it as the CW 4 Kids on May 24th. Which would be renamed as Toon's Eye on August 14th, 2010, then to get replaced by Vortex on August 25th, 2012, which ran until 
September 22, 2014. The CW's current children's programming block being One Magnificent Morning, owned by Hearst Media Production Group, originally known originally Litton Entertainment, a block filled with educational programming. Yuck. But the pro but the main reason is for this is because they had to change they had to they had they had to change it is because because they had they is because children are no longer watching broadcast networks on Saturday mornings and at the fact that Saturday morning cartoons on broadcast television was declining general loss. So that as of right now, one magnificent morning is still on to this very day. And it still ain't slowing down. <sighs> no surprise, no luck. Um so yeah. So he kinda so he kinda went through a full fledged plague of of their of the entire of the entire CW history? Yeah, I think so. I remember watching the CW on Saturday mornings for children's programming when I first time watched the CW for kids. When Toonzai came to be, I still watched the CW for kids, completely unaware that that 4Kids Entertainment has made a big mistake on their anime marketing. Then, then... I watched Vortex on the CW until 2014. As of right now, I no longer watch the CW anymore. As, as I can't, as without that sh famous show, whose line is it anyway? I I had no interest in watching the network anymore. So I moved on to watching whose line it is anyway, a, along with other former CW shows on on HBO Max, or as we call it. Max. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about the CW for today? Do you think it's still okay? Do you think it's starting to die off? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stay tuned.